All right, I'm Jacob Hornberger, Libertarian candidate for president. And I'm coming back to you again. I'm still driving uh, back to Virginia from the Connecticut Libertarian Party convention. I've already given you a commentary on the debate and one of the important points in the debate. But a friend of mine and supporter uh, telephoned me and said, oh, there, there's a guy there that, that's taking you to task on your open borders position. And he, and he says that on, on Twitter that if we if the party were to nominate Hornberger in his open border position, that the party, the Libertarian Party, would remain, his term was, a minor party. I, I would say like a marginal party or a 1% party, which is our, our standard vote total is 1%. And so this critique really goes to the heart of what's going on in this party. So I thought, well, okay, I got nothing better to do here. I'm going to address this point because it really goes to show you what's happened to the Libertarian Party. Now, what this guy, where this guy goes wrong is he's thinking like a Republican. I mean, that, that, that goes to show, you know, the heart of what's going on here in the party. He's thinking like a Republican. What he's thinking, what he's saying essentially, is that no Republican would ever vote for a Libertarian Party presidential candidate that advocates open borders. And, and he's absolutely right. I mean, he, he's saying if if we advocate open borders, no Republican's going to come and vote for the Libertarian Party presidential candidate is going to remain a 1% party. Now, why do I say a 1% party? Because that's the standard vote total as of right now. I think it could go lower. But um, the, the Wall Street Journal poll that just came out asked the American people, who will you vote for in the 2024 election? And 99% of them did not say Libertarian. 1% said Libertarian. Now, they're assuming, needless to say, that the Libertarian Party will continue running a candidate with the same message that it's been running for the last 20, 25 years. That is a candidate that supports America's system of immigration controls, which is a socialist system. I mean, there's no question about that. The system is based on the socialist principle of central planning. It's, it's, it's why there's been this decades-long, perpetual, never-ending, ongoing crisis. It produces death and suffering. It's part of the federal death machine. And it produces a police state, an immigration police state, all of which are contrary, needless to say, of sound libertarian principles, which stand for life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness. I mean, if you see a government program that is producing death, suffering in a police state, that's a fairly conclusive sign that that is not a libertarian position. But that has been the standard position. It's Republican-oriented. I call it welfare, warfare, state reform, and Republican light. Because that is the standard position of the Republican Party, favoring immigration socialism or the immigration police state, or America's system of immigration controls. Now, if you look at, let's say, just four points of reference here, you've got Joe Jorgensen, okay? She had her immigration reform plan, eliminating quotas or something like that, okay? 1% or 1.1%. Uh, you've got uh, Chase Oliver, ran for Senate in, in uh, Georgia, advocating immigration reform. He also ran for U.S. House. 98% of the voters said no. Like I said earlier in my, my commentary, he got his message out to every voter in, in Georgia, including immigration reform, that he was going to streamline it, he's going to simplify it, whatever, 2% vote. Uh, Mike Tremont, an advocate of immigration reform, uh, he took his message to the voters of the 20th Congressional District in Florida just a year ago, just like Chase. Less than 1% of the vote. And then we've got the, the Wall Street Journal poll that where the American people are saying, eh, well, only 1% are going to vote for this message, which includes immigration reform. So when this guy says that the, the Libertarian Party will stay the, the, the marginal party or minor party, what, what he's failing to recognize is that this message of immigration reform is the 1% message. Now, the question is, can a message of principle, 
of open borders, along with other principles of libertarianism that I'm advocating, can that achieve a breakout? And that's really the question. There's no question but that this message guarantees what he's saying, that the Libertarian Party will remain a marginal party. We, we already know that. The Wall Street Journal poll just right now, just in the past couple of months or so, is already reflecting that the, liber that the American people are saying, if you run this same kind of message, only 1% of us are going to vote now, Vote for it. And, and I think it could be less. If Bobby Kennedy gets on enough ballots, um, then he's clearly going to suck uh, the wind out of, of a standard Libertarian Party presidential candidate, which means that we may be dropping down to, this, to what used to be the standard of 0 0.05 and 0 0.03, that type of thing. Now, there is no question that this guy is right. No Republican's going to vote for a Libertarian Party presidential candidate that advocates open borders. It's a kiss of death for Republican voters. Okay? No question. But what he fails to recognize is that no Republican is going to vote for a Libertarian Party presidential candidate that advocates this immigration socialism, this, this system of immigration controls. That's a certainty. That's a guarantee. How do we know that? With the four points of reference I just mentioned. Okay, we got Joe's race. We got Chase's race. Two races in Georgia, House and Senate. Mike Tremont's race. And then the latest Wall Street Journal poll. All of which say 1% or 2%. That's it. That's the max. So that means that no Republican is ever going to vote for this message. If, if they were going to vote for this message, they would have come over in mass. Now, is it logical that Republicans will never vote for a Libertarian Party presidential candidate that advocates immigration controls? Yes, it's entirely logical. I mean, this is where this guy's right. He's thinking like a Republican, okay, which is standard in the party. He's thinking like a Republican because why, why is this logical that no Republican's going to vote for this message and, and, it, and the party's going to stay at 1% with this message? Because they've got Trump. And if Trump makes DeSantis his vice presidential candidate, which is entirely possible, you're going to have two of the most ferocious advocates of immigration socialism in an immigration police state in the history of this country. Now, why would any Republican even think about voting for a Libertarian Party presidential candidate that advocates immigration socialism, this, this system of immigration controls, when they got Trump and DeSantis to vote for I mean, that's not even logical. Why would they waste their vote on the Libertarian Party presidential candidate? Especially if the race is close between Trump and Biden. They're going to vote for the Republican. They're going to vote for the real thing. Why vote for a Republican light when you can vote for the real Republican? So there's, there's this guy's, he's thinking like a Republican. He's saying no Republican's ever going to vote for this message, and therefore the, the party's going to be staying at a 1% minor party rate. But that's when you're running a candidate that carries forth this message. We, are, we already have points of reference that establish this. So there's no question. The 2024 election is already over. As far as, the, as far as the Libertarian Party presidential candidate is concerned. If we run the standard standard message candidate. We already know that because that's what the Wall Street Journal poll is reflecting. If things haven't changed over the last three years, I guarantee you they're not going to change over the next 12 months. You know, people are not going to suddenly wake up and say, oh my gosh, this reform-oriented republican light message that the Libertarian Party's been putting out for 20 or 25 years, oh, all of a sudden we just love this message. That's not going to happen. Uh, you know, if it would have happened, it would have happened over the last three years. So the only chance there is for a breakout of, say, 10 to 15 percent is a message of principle, of libertarian principle, because we know that the message that advocates immigration controls and Social Security reform and Medicare reform and monetary reform and reform, 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 we know as a certainty that it max, that max is out at 1 percent. Okay, so... The real question here is, and this guy just can't see this, the real question is, can a campaign that is a presidential campaign 
in the Libertarian Party that is based on pure, genuine libertarian principles, including open borders, abolishing the social, uh, abolishing uh, the border patrol, the immigration service, and all restrictions on the free movements of goods, services, and people across borders, along with the other aspects, not just that message, because it can't be partial, along with the other principled message of libertarianism, that is a voluntary charitable set, uh, uh, system where you abolish all the socialism, the socialism of Social Security immediately, Medicare immediately. In fact, my friend told me that there's a, another tweet with a person that says, oh, if you think his open borders position is amazing, you ought to see his position on Social Security and Medicare. You see, she's thinking like a Republican because Republicans, I mean, well, like a Democrat too, they can't conceive of a system without socialism that you've got to have this, this system that takes care of old people, a government system that violates our core principle, the non-aggression principle. But they're, you know, they take this position, that all my opponents, that there's a contract with socialism, we've got to honor the contract for the next 50 or 70 years, and that we can't have freedom for 50 to 70 years, because you can't have freedom under socialism. And so here's a party that says, well, we stand for freedom, and we, we, and we quote Ludwig von Mises, who wrote a book on socialism, a, a critical analysis of socialism. And, but we've got to continue these socialist programs like Social Security and Medicare for 50 years or 30 years or 70 years because they say there's a contract with socialism that has to be honored. I mean, who's going to vote for this kind of message? Where is the constituency? Where do these people say our votes are going to come from? They say, well, you know, the Libertarian Party shouldn't be a minor party, shouldn't be a marginal party. Well, then tell us where the constituency is for this message. Where's the big votes that are going to come in? Because the Wall Street Journal polls are already confirming what we've already seen, that it maxes out at 1%. This, there is no constituency for this message, okay, of continuing socialism, of, of immigration controls, that's been the disaster of this message. This is what keeps the party down at the 1% level. This is what these critics cannot understand. Now, so the, the, the $64,000 question is, can my message that is based on pure, genuine libertarian principles get rid of socialism immediately, rely on voluntary support, don't use the coercive apparatus of government, to take care of people. When you're when you're using the coercive apparatus of government, you're just saying socialism is the only thing to do. When you're saying people would die in the streets if there weren't socialism, I mean, that is not a good message for a political party that prides itself on, on voluntary charity and voluntary actions. There's no doubt in my mind that you could abolish and you should abolish these socialist programs immediately and immediately you can rely on children and grandchildren to come to the assistance of people in need. Churches of America are filled with people that would come to the assistance of people. They already do. You got grant making foundations. But if libertarians don't believe that freedom works, how are we going to communicate that message to, to people out there? But again, the $64,000 question is, can this message, the message that I'm advocating of genuine libertarian principles across the board, not just on immigration, but on socialism across the board, reject school vouchers and all these other socialist reform measures, and, uh, for reject all the monetary reform measures, separate money in the state. Can that message break this party into the 10 to 15% category? That's the real message. We know that the other message will guarantee a 1%. So when he says that, oh, Jacob's message of open borders will, will guarantee that the that the party remains at 1%. The reality is that this other message that we've been running for 20 to 25 years, that guarantees the 1%. We know that as a certainty because of these points of reference that I've made reference to, including the current Wall Street Journal poll, where people say 1% of us will vote for that message. Okay? Now, can my message do better? Absolutely. And, and that's that's my thesis in this race. This is what I'm telling the party. Not only can this message of genuine libertarian principles break out to the 10 to 15%, it's the only thing that can do it. The other message we know cannot do that. 
this this is where the soul searching in this party comes in. Are you willing to give up what has been the standard message for presidential candidates in this party for 20 to 25 years minimum? Are you willing to give that up in order to garner a breakout of 10 to 15 percent? Because it's the only chance there is for a breakout. And oh, much more important, it's the only chance there is to lead America to genuine liberty. Because reforming socialism, keeping socialism intact and coming up with a plan to make it streamlined and more efficient and, and so forth, that does not lead America to freedom. That, that, at best, it accomplishes a warmed over, improved serfdom. Okay. So can it do that? I say absolutely yes. There's no question about it. It's the only chance there is. If you do the same thing over and over again and expect a different result, you're not going to get a different result, okay? We already know that. So we know that what we've we've done for the last 20 years does not work. Okay? It guarantees your 1%. It guarantees what this guy says, a minor party. Okay? Guaranteed, and, and I think it could go less if Bobby Kennedy Jr. gets on enough ballots um, and, 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 and beats us. I mean, from what I understand, we're now down to 47 states and uh, that you know, that lowers our, our, our vote totals. Well, this is why I keep pointing to my race 20 years ago for U.S. Senate in Virginia. This is 20 years ago. This is before anybody even knew what libertarianism was. And I ran a race for U.S. Senate, statewide race, against one of the most popular governors in the history of the state, John Warner. He was chairman of the Armed Services Committee. He had been married to the famous actress Elizabeth Taylor. This guy was a popular guy. I ran in 2002. This is right after the 9-11 attacks. I'm saying that U.S. foreign policy was the driving, motivating force behind those attacks. What Ron Paul would say six years later in the Republican Party is he was seeking the Republican Party nomination. And you can imagine the reaction I got from Republicans. I mean, I'd speak at a forum and point this out. Woo! I mean, you can imagine the, the diatribes against me. I didn't care. I was calling for open borders. I was calling for abolishing Social Security and abolishing Medicare. Did the same thing that shocked this other person on Twitter. Oh my gosh, you ought to see what his positions are on eradicating the socialism of these social welfare state programs. All right, so I knew I would not get one Republican vote. I didn't care. You know, it, it was a certainty I wouldn't get one Republican vote. Oh, open borders. I mean, there w I knew there wasn't a chance. That's a kiss of death for a Republican voter. He's never going to vote for a Republican candidate, I mean, a Libertarian candidate that calls for open borders. Done. It's over. So what this guy says about, oh, you, you know, Libertarian Party candidate can't get voters, he's thinking Republican, okay? That's where he goes wrong. Now, the Democrats did not run anybody because they knew they couldn't beat Warner. Um, but I also knew that I wouldn't get any Democrat protest votes. I'm calling for the immediate abolition of public school. No school vouchers for me or charter schools. Or I mean, these are socialist reform programs. They rely on, on the, um, the coercive apparatus of the state, taxation, to take money from one person, give it to another person. The same funding vehicle for public government schooling, uh, violates the libertarian non-aggression principle, violates the pledge that we all take in this party not to support the initiation of force. So I knew no Democrat was going to vote for me, you know, and abolish Social Security and Medicare. What, what, what Democrat's going to vote for me? I didn't care. Okay. I had my set of libertarian principles and, and the same print people the same types of people back then, 20 years ago, as these two people on Twitter were saying, ha, 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 they were yucking it up because the Libertarian Party presidential candidate had just come out with a 0.03% return. He had a plan to reform Social Security, etc. And um, they were expecting me to do worse than that, like 0 0.01, 0 0.02. And they were yucking it up just like... You know, these two people on Twitter today. It's funny how things don't change in 20 years in certain respects inside the party. Well, at the end of this process, I get 7% of the statewide vote. Now, I didn't say 0 
I said 7%, 106,000 people. This is before libertarianism is even known as a household term. 20 years later, today, libertarianism is a household term. I mean, people know about libertarianism. We've made a lot of progress in 20 years, thankfully. So what I'm saying is there is a big block of votes that will vote for our principles. They will not vote for the reform-oriented libertarian presidential candidate. It's just not going to happen. You, you, you present a libertarian party presidential candidate that advocates immigration controls or immigration reform, social security privatization, opt-outs, gradualism, uh, Medicare reform, health savings accounts, uh, etc., uh, mandatory minimum sentence repeal, you know, I, I'm there calling for the legalization of all drugs, heroin, cocaine, opioids, fentanyl, the whole thing. 7% of the statewide vote. Who are those voters? I don't know, but they're out there because I proved it. And they weren't voting for me. I didn't have a lot of money. I mean, I, I, they didn't know me from Adam. But there's a block of voters, and this is what I keep saying. We can't rely on the Ron Paul voters. They're Republicans. They're not going to cross party lines. It never was going to happen. That's a fantasy. And it still exists as a fantasy among my opponents who think, they say, oh, the Libertarian Party is the party of Ron Paul. Ron Paul got that big surge of votes as a Republican. That surge of voters, if they were going to come over, they would have come and voted for Joe. She wouldn't have gotten 1%. It's never going to happen. We have to find our own block of voters. And the only way to find that block of voters is by running a candidate that adheres to these libertarian principles. Not partially, because that's that's not going to work. Totally. Because they're out there. That block of voters will vote for our message, and I proved that 20 years ago. I have no doubts they're still out there, but in bigger numbers, like double what I achieved 20 years ago, from 7% to 14%. No doubt in my mind. But it's got to be the principal case for liberty. Because... Otherwise, you get the 1%. But that's where the soul searching in the party has to come in. You, we got to decide, okay, which direction are we going to take? Are we going to take the standard Republican-like direction? And that's what these two people on Twitter are saying. No, Jacob, we got to stay with Republican light. We got to stay re with reform. Because they cannot, they cannot conceive that there's a block of voters out there that will vote for this principled message. And so they, but in the process, they consign the party to the standard 1%. Because that's what the Wall Street Journal polls are already telling us. And they're, con they're confirming these other points of reference. That this is a 1% message. 2% at most. On a national level, it's, it's 1%. And that if we're going to break out to a higher level, this is the only way. You have to change directions completely in this party. I'm not unmindful of the difficult nature of this task. I mean, these two people on Twitter, they establish what, what I'm saying, what I'm up against, that this is an established mindset in the party of Republican light and welfare warfare state reform. They cannot conceive of a society based on eradicating socialism and immigration and social security and Medicare and monetary policy, education. But that's the only message that can achieve the breakout that we all want. And that's where the soul searching comes in. If you're, if you're satisfied with 1%, stick with this message. No problem. You can go with any of my five opponents. You'll get five, 1% at the max. But if you want to achieve a breakout of 10 to 15%, then you got to move this party in a totally different direction. There is no other choice. And that totally different direction is in the direction of the founding principles of this party, which entails the eradication of socialism across the board. Socialism has been the bane of mankind, as I told the Connecticut Libertarian Party. Uh, and, and socialism encompasses social security. They don't call it social security for nothing. Medicare and Medicaid, classic socialist programs. Public schooling, classic socialism. Federal Reserve, classic socialist monetary central planning. Immigration controls, classic socialism, along with the death and suffering of the police state that comes with it. This is our only chance for a breakout, but it's a good chance. It's a chance that will make this party a force to be reckoned with, but it entails a change of directions, a total change of directions, and that's what I'm calling this party, calling on this party to do, to change directions completely.
and restore the brand of principal libertarianism that, on which this party was founded, that, that, that Ludwig von Mises is all about, and that we move this party in that direction of principle and we run a campaign that is based, a presidential campaign that is based totally, 100%, no exceptions, on true, genuine, pure libertarian principles. I'm Jacob Hornberger, Libertarian Candidate for President. My campaign website is jacobforliberty.com.